This is CPM Pre-Calculus Chapter 2, number 132. So here we're trying to find the area between 1 and 2 between our function f of x and our x-axis. So we want to use, in part A, four rectangles to find the upper and lower bounds. So that means the over approximation and the under approximation. Okay? So what we want to do first is to quickly sketch our function sketch f of x. Okay, so I know that this is just a parabola that went through a reflection across the x-axis and then shifted up six units. So my sketch is going to look like this. Here's six. Here's my parabola going down. Okay, I'm looking at the area between one and two. So my area is right here. Shade it in. And that's my sketch. I also want I, I want to know the width of each region of each rectangle, and that's going to be b minus a over n, where this is a to b, so that's two minus one over four, which is one over four, or 0.25. Okay. Next, I want to zoom in to just this region. Okay. So if I zoom in to one to, to two region. Right, the graph is going down like this. It's a parabola. It's not a line. It should look more curvy, right? And in between one and two is 1.5. Between 1.5 and one is 1.25. And in between 1.5 and two is 1.75. And each of these has a distance of our width 0.25. Okay. So I want to create rectangles right using first I'm going to go ahead and use the left endpoint rectangle there we go all right and I also want to label all these points the x value is 1 the y value is we plug 1 into that equation so it's negative 1 squared plus 6 I'm not using parentheses because this is going to be the negative value of 1 squared. Okay, this point is going to be 1 point right here is 1.25 comma negative 1.25 squared minus plus 6, excuse me. This point is 1.5 comma negative 1.5 squared plus 6. And finally, 1.75 comma negative 1.75 squared plus 6 and this is why we're putting all the y values as negative of x squared plus 6 okay so next I want to find the area using our left endpoint rectangles and that's the base times the height so the first rectangle is going to be oops 1.25 is the base and the height is the y value of negative 1 squared plus 6. The next rectangle is the base of 0.25 times the y value of negative 1.25 squared plus 6 plus the next rectangle is 0.25 is the base. The height is negative 1.5 squared plus 6, right? Finally, this rectangle has a base of 0.25 and a height of negative 1.75 squared plus 6. Okay? And because we're, we're going to be asked about um, the lower versus upper bound, this one we know is A sub L is our upper bound, right? Because we're including this area, right? All these make it an upper bound. So this we know is the upper bound. Okay? So let's write this in sigma notation. What stays the same in all of these terms, right, is the 0.25, the negative here, right, something changes, so not that, squared plus 6. So this is the thing that is a linear series, right? 
let's use k we can start anywhere let's start at zero and if this is term zero we go zero one two three right zero one two three that's how many terms we're going to have so our linear series is looking at just the number zero 1.25 1.5 1.75 so we have y equals mx plus b that's our line that's from linear series right m we know is what we add each time which is 0.25 x we know is k because we're using k as the variable so that changes this to be y is equal to 0.25k plus b so we want to solve for b we want to look at where where does k start when k is 0 our output should be the first term here which is 1 the output y is 1 so plug those values into our equation we have 1 equals 0.25 times 0 plus b so these cancel we get b is equal to 1 so that gives us the equation y is equal to 0.25k plus 1. Plug it back into here on k plus 1, and we're done. Let's go ahead and plug it into our calculators. Program sum plus. We're starting at 0, stopping at 3. Make sure you put all the parentheses in the argument so 0.25 times negative and open parentheses 0.25x plus 1 close parentheses square plus 6 close parentheses that's equal to 4.0317 0.0325 units squared. And remember, this is our upper bound area. Okay? We also want to find the lower bound area, which is going to be our right endpoint rectangles. Right? Because if we use the right endpoint rectangles, that's going to create a rectangle below the curve. Let's put away the calculator for a second. Right? These here in pink are going to be our right endpoint rectangles, right? And we can get the area quickly using sigma notation by just changing the endpoints here. So that's going to go now from k equals to 1 to 4, and the argument or the expression here is going to be the same. Okay, so let's plug this in our calculator to get Remember, this is now the lower bound, right? So let's go ahead and run that. Now we're starting at 1, stopping at 4. The expression is 0.25 times negative of 0.25x plus 1 squared plus 6, close the parentheses, so our lower bound is 3.28125 units squared. This is our lower bound area. Okay. Normally what we would do is add them together and divide by 2 to find the average, a better approximation. But this problem is just asking us to find the lower bound and the upper bound, right? The lower here and the upper bound here. Okay. So we're done with part A. Part B then asks us to go ahead and express the sum for the lower bound using sigma notation. So lower bound using sigma. And we already did that. The lower bound using sigma notation is just A sub R, and it's right here, right? We already did this, so this right here is part B, the answer to part B equals to right here. All right, so we're done with part B. We finished part A, and that ends CPM Precalculus Chapter 2, number 132.